Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about binary variables, also known as indicator variables or dummy variables. Uh, and what these are is that these are variables that only have two possible values. Uh, yes or no, zero or one, on or off. Uh, it's either one thing or another. That is a binary variable. Uh, these are very, very common in econometrics and social science generally. Uh, so for example, did you get the treatment pol uh, policy treatment? Yes or no? Do you live in the United States? Yes or no? Uh, are you under a particular policy right now? Yes or no? Is it Saturday? Yes or no? Right? Lots of different variables that can be basically summed up as yes or no. We would code these generally as zero and one. Zero for no and one for yes. Now, what can we do with these kinds of variables when we have them in our data, especially if we're trying to use them as explanatory variables on the right hand side? It's going to change things a little bit. Uh, everything we've talked about with regression so far has made the assumption that the variables on the right hand side are continuous. They can take any value uh, and then we can interpret a coefficient on them as a one unit change in that variable. So what, how does that change when we have binary data? Well, at its core, what ends up happening is that we're basically doing a comparison of means here. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got here some data from the Panel Study of Income Dynamics, PSID. Uh, and what I am doing is I'm uh, getting the average logged earnings of people who are above the age of 30, and I'm comparing people who are married to people who are not married. Now, can you spot where the binary variable is here? It is, of course, married. Are you married or not? Yes or no. That's a binary variable. Uh, here we can see in the table it is either false or true. False being zero or no, one being true or yes. Now I'm comparing the means of these things. Uh, and if I take the mean of earnings, of logged earnings, uh, then I get a value of 9.26 for people who are not married and 9.47 for people who are married. Uh, and so what we see here is that, yeah, if you're married, on average, people earn more uh, if they are married than if they are not married, at least some people, among people who are above the age of 30. Okay, so that's a comparison of means. Uh, we can sort of see it on a graph here. Uh, and uh, how does this work out in a regression context? Well, if we take that model, if we run a regression, and we run a regression of log earnings on that binary variable married, right? So here we have a log uh, linear regression as we would normally do it, LM. On the left-hand side, we have the logarithm of earnings. On the right-hand side, we have are you married or not? Uh, what it will give us back is the difference of means. Uh, so if you recall, uh, people who are not married have a log aver an average log earnings of 9.26. Uh, people who are married uh, have an average log earnings of 9.47. That's a difference of 0.21 in terms of log earnings. So let's go back to our regression table. What do we have? Well, uh, the intercept here is 9.26, which if you recall was the average log earnings of people who were not married. Uh, and we have the married variable here, and the coefficient on it is 0.21, which if you recall is the difference between people who were not married and people who were married. So when we run a regression, and one of the right-hand side variable, and the right-hand side variable is binary, it is comparing the mean of our dependent variable between the, uh, the group that has a zero value of the binary variable and the group that has a one. The intercept becomes the average of the group that has, that has a zero, uh, people who are not married, uh, and then the uh, group that has a one gets that, that the coefficient on that variable gives us the difference. And so, if we add them together, then we get the average for people who are married. You can imagine how this makes sense. Remember, remember that OLS is trying to predict values. Uh, all we have to go on here is are you married or not. So the best prediction that I can give you, the the one that's going to minimize the sum of squared errors, is just guessing the average among your group. And so if I, if I plug in a value of married equals zero here, if you're not married, then all I have left in this model is the intercept, right? So I'm going to use that intercept to predict the values for the non-married people, which I'm going to do with the mean. So that coefficient is going to become the mean for people who are not married. If I plug in a value of one for married, if I look at married people, now I have two things going on. I have the intercept plus I have the coefficient on married times the value of married, which is one. So now we're just back to intercept plus the coefficient on married. So the sum of those two together should give me the average value for married people. And since the intercept gave me the average for non-married people, the coefficient on married must give me the difference between the two, right? So the coefficient on the binary variable is giving me a comparison of means. 
Uh, I can, of course, get the st uh, standard error on that comparison, the p-values, and I can see whether those averages are different. It looks like, in fact, the averages are quite different. I have a very small p-value here. So we're doing a comparison of means. Why bother doing it in a regression context as opposed to just comparing the means or doing something like a, a regular t-test? Well, for one thing, we get standard errors and t-statistics and p-values just like we, if we were running a t-test, but also we can add controls. So here I have the same model, but I've added some controls for the number of kids that you have and how old you are, uh, and it works just like we were doing it before, right? If you add controls, it takes out the part of the, of the relationship between married and earnings uh, that has to do with these controls. So the 0.34 that we have on this table here is now the difference in uh, the, the, the difference in means in terms of earnings between married people and non-married people taking out the part of that relationship, the part of that difference that is due to the number of kids that you have or how old you are. So we can uh, still interpret it in the same way. It's still a difference of means. Just now we have to incorporate the fact that we have taken some of the variation, some of that difference out. Uh, and whatever we have left over has to is the difference that we see not accounting for those controls. One quick thing to note is that we only have one version of the variable in here, right? So there's two different values going on here, married and not married, but we only have married in the regression. Why don't we have married and not married so that we can compare them to, to each other? Well, it's because we already have that comparison in there. Remember, the intercept is showing us the average with it for non-married people. So the non-married people are already in there, and then we compare them with the married amount. The other problem is that if we did put in both, we would have a problem called perfect multicollinearity. Uh, which happens when the uh, any two when any set of uh, variables in our regression are a linear combination of another, and our constant that we have in there, the intercept, is basically the number one uh, by itself. It's one for everybody. And if everybody's either married or not married, then if you add up the values of married and not married, everyone only has one or the other. So the sum of the two is always going to be one. So if we add those two together, we get one for everybody. The intercept is one for everybody. Those two things are the same. We're going to get some confusing things when we try to get a uh, OLS uh, solution. Uh, so imagine, for example, we did put in both married and non-married, and we're trying to get our best prediction. We want to minimize the sum of squared residuals, uh, but we can do that in a bunch of different ways. So for example, uh, I can plug in those averages that I had before. I can put in a zero for the intercept and say, oh yeah, the average for married people was 9.47. The average for non-married people was 9.26. There we go. Good. That seems good, right? But instead, I could do the version that we had before, where I leave out non-married, uh, and I have an intercept of 9.26, and then the difference of 0.21. Okay, well, that's valid too. But I could also do something weird, like put 3 for the intercept, and then each of the means minus 3 for the individual coefficients. Uh, and now the problem is not necessarily that any of these are wrong. It's that OLS has no way of picking between them. So it can't give me a single answer as to what minimizes the sum of squared residuals, because there's a bunch of different options that minimize the sum of squared residuals. So what I'm doing by leaving out non-married is I'm basically choosing between these different options, and I'm saying I want this version right here. You could, if you wanted, choose this version and leave out the intercept. Uh, that's something that you can do, but a standard is to leave out one of the categories and then make the coefficient on the remaining uh, value relative. So the coefficient on married is relative to not being married. Which, by the way, we can take that logic and extend it to variables that have more than two values. So there can be more than two categories in a variable, right? Married and non-married is one thing, but what if we wanted to compare married, non-married, uh, divorced, widowed? There's lots of different categories that you can be. Well, it turns out that we're going to do that with binary variables as well. It just means that we're going to have a different binary vari var variable for each of those different values. Are you married or not? Yes or no. Are you divorced or not? Yes or no. Are you separated or not? Yes or no. Are you widowed or not? Yes or no. And if you can only be in one of those categories, then again, sum all those up, you're going to get to one. Everybody's in one category and not the others. So what happens if we want to compare these categories in a regression? We're going to get the exact same interpretation. So here is some fake data that I've drawn up with uh, four different groups, groups A, B, C, and D. Uh, and the means uh, for these groups, uh, so uh, the group mean of group A is 1, uh, the mean of group B is 2, the mean of group C is 3, the mean of group 4 is D, easy. Now, if I regress the outcome on the group indicators, right? So the group variable here is a single variable. It takes four values, A, B, C, or D. If I include it as a variable by itself, R will automatically know to turn those into binary variables. So it will not try to put in some sort of weird textual group variable in my regression. It will say, oh, 
Group A, that's a binary variable. Group B, that's a binary variable. Are you in group B or not? Are you in group C or not? Are you in group D or not? Then it will know to leave out one of those categories. Here it has left out group A, right? So what do I get? Well, I have group A being omitted. The intercept becomes the average for group A because that's the omitted group. If I set group B to zero and group C to zero and group D to zero, I'm in group A. And my prediction for group A is the mean of A, which is one. That's where my intercept of one comes. And then all these other coefficients are relative to that omitted group. So the coefficient on B is about one. Uh, that doesn't mean that the average of B is one. It means that the average of B is one higher than the average of A, right? It's relative to whatever the omitted group is. And again, we can add controls on top of this in exactly the same way. All right, that's the basics of using binary variables. Uh, they are zero or one. Uh, you can include them in a regression. When you do so, the basic idea is that you're comparing means. You're comparing the mean of the variable that you're looking at. So married versus uh, the whatever category is omitted, non-married. Or group B versus uh, group A, which is omitted. Uh, and so we can interpret it as the difference of means. Uh, it does, the OLS does this because it's basically trying to fit a line, uh, but there's only two points on the line, uh, and so it just sort of, you know, fits that line on two points. You can fit a line on two points, you just draw a straight line between them, and then the, the uh, coefficient that you get, our slope, how much it changes as it goes from zero to one, is the difference as it goes from zero to one, right? So that difference of means. Uh, we can extend this to being more than two categories, as many categories as we want, as long as you can only be in one or the other. Uh, and of course, again, it will turn those categories into different binary variables, one for each option, and then it will omit one of them, right? If we have two categories, yes or no, it's a binary variable. We omit one of them, we put in one coefficient. If we have four categories, we omit one of them, we have three coefficients, group B, G, C, and D, relative to the omitted group A. And we still interpret it as difference of means, specifically the difference of the mean of that group versus whatever the omitted group is. To do one more very brief example, let's say that we're talking about education. Uh, so here we have a bunch of different education categories, no high school degree, high school degree, some college, bachelor's degree, uh, graduate degree. If I regress log earnings on education with some controls, uh, then I get some coefficients. What's the omitted group here? Well, I don't see no high school degree, so that must be the omitted group. So this 0.323 here uh, tells me that the average log earnings for people with a high school degree is 0.323 higher in terms of log earnings than people with no high school degree. That's my interpretation there. I'm comparing it to the omitted group, uh, of course, given these controls as well. All right, that's it. Thank you.